Well, let me start um, just a bit. Who I am, I'm Steve Brunette. I'm a, a lawyer in Colorado Springs, but I want to just say a bit about how I um, got into this, you know, field and how I was uh, invited here. I um, went to law school because I didn't know what I wanted to do when I grow up. You know, I didn't, you know, really plan to be a lawyer, but I went to law school just because I wanted to learn how to work within a system uh, and be effective in working in the system. I've been a lawyer now about 30 years. I spent five years, the first five years in litigation, representing you know plaintiffs in uh, medical malpractice, uh, those types of cases, and then doing um, complex commercial litigation all over the, the United States. So I have some familiarity with uniform commercial code with, uh, you know, high-level litigation, but I was uh, working 60, 70 hours a week. My daughter's growing up without me, so I got out of that, got into legal publishing for 10 years, right? In that field, what I had to do, and this is getting to the point of why I'm, or how I'm approaching this work, you have to look ahead two or three years about what areas of um, litigation are emerging, who is defining the frontiers of this, what lawyers, what judges are defining the frontiers of this. Because back then when we had books more than you know, digital materials, you had to plan ahead and invite an author to write a book for you, right? So I've approached this the same way. You know, I was, I've been practicing law in my own town, Colorado Springs, since 96. I've done real estate litigation. I have a background in commercial litigation years ago. I've uh, worked at national policy levels in forensic sciences. So when the economy started crashing, I just you have to have an entry point into something that's complicated. It's a difficult area to grasp if you try to get it all in one time. So my entry point was, OK, what effect is this going to have on homeowners, uh, real property records? And I quickly got into a very complicated area of law, which involves uniform commercial code, which I had some experience in. You know, national policies, you know, the governing boards for, uh, you know, financial uh, organizations, and homeowners who are losing homes to foreclosure. And I'd been involved in that litigation, and I knew that a foreclosure is, in Colorado, is not a final judgment, okay? I'm going to start with basics here and then try to relate it to it. I knew that uh, I'd taken houses out of foreclosure before. A judge in a Rule 120 proceeding in Colorado holds a hearing if the homeowner objects to it, but it's not really a, much of an adversarial hearing, typically. It can be. The judges have discretion to do more than they do. And um, out of respect for judges, I mean, people are complaining about judges, but judges have uh, discretion. They also have a duty to work with what's in front of them, the evidence that's in front of them. In a Rule 120 proceeding, they're being inundated with um, so many of them that they don't take time in most courts in Colorado to deal with all of the evidence, to get down to the basics of who owns a loan, who has the right to foreclose. They just don't get to it. And I'm not saying that that's wrong. I'm saying that they have the discretion to do that or not. But what a homeowner has to do in Colorado is file a separate lawsuit under uh, Rule 105 of the Colorado Rules of Civil Procedure, which allows the homeowner to challenge everything, just basically full-fledged litigation. That's what I've been doing the last year and a half, two years in my, in my law practice um, with just a few cases. I haven't taken on too many. But what I'm doing is challenging the foundations of the foreclosure, and I'm looking for good cases. You know, I mean, everybody in America who has a securitized mortgage is affected by what has happened in the securitization industry. Okay, and I want to get to that in, in a moment. But um, I have, for example, I'm not here to talk about cases but other than in general. I have a case, though, for example, that uh, a single mom locked out of her house the day after Christmas, 2008. She was making her payments. She'd been behind, but she got caught up. She's under a new agreement. Arrives home uh, and her 40 acres east of Yoder with her six months old or 18 month old or mom. And the house had been locked and winterized. And she'd been making her payments. So that kind of case gives you more than just a securitization problem. And she, they have securitization problems. But what I'm trying to do is change the law in Colorado, the procedural rules and the, and the law that governs these types of proceedings, 
by bringing in good cases. By good case, I mean, and everybody's got a good case if you got a securitized mortgage. But I mean, in terms of like the validity of your title, which I'll get to in a minute again, because um, it's complicated, but I'm almost there. But the um, to get the attention of a court, you really have to have more than just a securitized mortgage these days, you know, because everybody's got one, everybody's been affected by this, right? So what I'm trying to do is change the law in a way that anybody with a securitized mortgage, anybody with a title issue, will be more likely to get a fair hearing once the judges get from cases that will get their attention that um, there are some issues here that need to be, need to be dealt with, okay? So um, given that, um, my goal is to change the law in Colorado in, what, in governing foreclosure proceedings. And I've got a lot of materials here. I brought some handouts if you want to see them. There's a proposal that I will be floating around more with uh, you know, elected representatives. Uh, Colorado Bar Association has a uh, legislative committee. I'm going to get this fine-tuned and send it to everybody, the Attorney General, uh, Colorado uh, you know, Bar Association, the Legislative Advocacy Group. The local El Paso County Bar Association has a subcommittee that's beginning to reconvene to deal with a lot of the issues involved in foreclosures. I'm going to get this to them as well. Uh, the Public Trustees Association, every elected representative I know. In fact, I also brought a, a copy of an article that was in the Colorado Springs Business Journal on January 14th where they interviewed me. And I've been trying to keep a low profile in these cases, but the media is finding me. In that one case I told you about, the New York Times did a piece on that last October, along with a couple others, but anyway, it's like, um, I brought this article too. If you read that, you'll get a sense of what the issues are in the Colorado Springs Business Journal editorial context, and it's a really accurate, you know, as far as it goes, description of it. If you look at that, it also identifies elected representatives on the committee that will be necessary to really make a proposal in this area to change the law. One of them, in fact, is here in Glenwood, he says he really wants to look at this. I can't remember his name, but he's a, he's, he's a new guy. But there's like five new people on this committee. So I'm, I'm bringing this out just to uh, educate people, as this film is, will educate people. And this, it, it's awesome to have films like this as well. So um, anyway, if I have materials here you can look at to get into um, what I'm talking about in as much detail as you want. And I'm not going to be lobbying. I'm too busy with cases and deadlines. I'm going to float this out there, and you know, there's support for it already. I'm getting emails and contact from around the state about this, just because it's um, so interesting.